After a slow start to the 2015 season, the Reaver football team has strung together three straight wins, but they've also strung together a steady list of injuries. Week six and the Garden City Bronx Busters roll into town. Could the Reavers piece together a team strong enough to tame the Bronx, or would there be an upset at Titan Stadium? Highlights and more between the Bronx and the Reavers coming up. This is the Iowa Western Football Coaches Show, the Coach Stro Show, only on CBTV 17. Two teams with high expectations coming into the 2015 season, and while one team's fortunes have slightly changed, the others are sinking into the October mud. I'm Jake Ryan along with the head coach, Scott Strohmeyer, for another edition of the Iowa Western Football Coaches Show. Well, Coach, there has been a, a bit of a change in the patterns of, of the way the season's gone. The first two games obviously didn't go your way, but you ripped off four straight, even though you may feel like you're piecemealing it. Four straight <laughs> wins is four straight wins. What's the, the, what's the feeling going into the game against Garden City? Well, I think, you know, it was, a, it was another winnable game. You know, we felt going in, not that, uh, you know, we're way better than anybody in the Jayhawk right now, just with how depleted we are. But we felt if we played our game, we needed to play well defensively and, and uh, trying to find a few ways to get in the end zone that we'd have a good shot. There's been several years of Reaver football where it feels like all the Reavers have to do is line up, make sure you execute plays, and you're going to win the game. There's no doubt going in. Going again this season, it's, it's not that way. Garden City may be down, but it feels like they could jump up any time and, and bite just about anybody. They can. I mean, they got enough. Uh, where they're really depleted is up front. Uh, you know, they got skill guys. They can, they can play with anybody. Defensively, they're really good. You know, so I, I was really hoping that we could get a few and uh, get a couple, but we were one or two scores. I mean, the game's right there. Yeah. A, a big play here um, or a, a mistake on our end. Shoot, now you're in, you're in for another ball game. Well, let's check out those first half highlights and see what kind of big plays happen for the Reavers and the Bronc Busters. Iowa Western in their all blues, first time since early last season that they wore them against the Butler Grizzlies. And it will be the Bronc Busters that start with the football after you win the toss. Nice jarring hit there by Stone Kane. Talk a little bit about deferring. I haven't never seen you defer <laughs> the, uh, the football. Well, I, part of it is I, I heard that uh, their coach will kick in both halves, so okay. <laughs> that was part of the, one of the deals. But the other one is, you know, we're playing well defensively, and when you have an explosive offense, you want to get out there right away and just I, try something different. I tell you what, you're playing well offensively as well. Brock Larson, you see a couple plays go threading the needle for Tyus Mason, then John Nazambo ripping off some good runs. He is a very tough runner and doing a little bit better job of ball security here later in the season. Yeah, I mean, he does give you that, uh, you know, a little bit tougher runner. Here is a, a miscue by the Reavers. Bobby Patterson's first field goal attempt of the day. A little bit low on the line drive, and they got a piece of it and return it to start off the uh, to start off their drive. You know, you get a good drive, you got to come away with points. There we don't, and then you know that one we'd like to get that turnover. But uh, defense playing well. Rico comes up empty on the interception attempt. Reavers do force the uh, Bronquesters to give it back, and then it's Alt Meeks that comes in for his one snap as the QB. Uh, that experiment didn't go so well on the day. Just one, one attempt for all. No, I mean it's it's tough too. You know, we teams know it now, and uh, when he comes in there, but we still got to utilize it. They still got to practice against it. Johnson making the catch, but it's not enough to keep the Reaver drive going. Bobby Patterson does pin him deep, and and it's the Bronkbusters that will um, punt on third down and 13. <laughs> a two and out, coach. They they've done that numerous times this year. So a 49-yard punt by their quarterback, and then. Some trickeration. You usually don't uh, you usually don't roll these plays out, but you see the the end around here, and Anthony Johnson steps back, hucks it downfield. A lot of arc on that pass, but right into the waiting arms of Marshall Clark. Yeah, it was good. Well, sometimes you got to find a way to get something going, and that was one of them. Some trickery. Some penalties move you close to the goal line. John Nazambo punches it in his second touchdown as a reaver, and then Garden City back to work. J. Rue Campbell, their starting quarterback. Uh, needless to say, he might be having visions of the Reavers in his head after <laughs> Saturday's game. Yeah, 
I think so, and I, one of the plays late in the game, I think he got his hair pulled uh, on the tackle. Well, looks he had some long hair to be pulling, <laughs> that's for sure. And this is a fumble by Brock Larson. Just gets spun around in the second quarter and loses the football. Have you talked to him about the way he carries the football? A few just, times. It seems like he carries it way outside, and <laughs> it is. when he's getting popped, he's getting popped good. He is. He's got, he's got to take care of the ball a little bit better. You know, and that one was a bet. You know, we had a new guy in who's been out for since Butler, and they gave us a different look, and it kind of hurt us, but uh, you got to take care of the football. Tyus Mason taking care of the football on that run. Now Brock Larson back to work, throws it outside. And uh, again, he's threading the needle into some tight spots uh, during this game. Yeah, and I mean, to be honest with you, that's part of the reason we're doing what we're, some of the things we're doing is he's just got to gain more confidence in, in what, he, what he can throw. And part of it's his footwork and, and timing of it. He knows where he's got to go with it, he's got to be quicker. Speaking of footwork, J. Rue Campbell gets out of trouble, gains a short gain, and then another good hit for the Reavers, this time on fourth down. A lot of jarring hits that, that pop the ball loose on Saturday. Yeah, i tell you what, on both sides, like really good defensive plays. And Lionel Johnson stepping in front of that one, and Tyus Mason doing a good job knocking him out of bounds. Otherwise, he, uh, he had a game-tying touchdown there. Yeah, you know, then they overthrow there. So we, yeah. we got a couple breaks on this one, you know, thanks to Tyus. Got him, and then we come up with a huge Yeah, I thought Dietrich was going to go all the way on this one, but he cut back inside instead of out. Second interception on the season for number 33, the transfer out of Georgia, uh, turning things around for Brock Larson in the offense. And another great pass by Brock right into the hands of the receiver coming across the middle. It was it was good, and uh, you know there he got a little bit happy feet. Uh, stay with his reads, you might be okay, but didn't get anything out of it. Venus triplet on the run, then J. Rue Campbell will pull this back on play action, rolls out, throws down the middle, and a pretty good diving catch there for Jeff Thomas. Direct snap to triplet, and rips off the big run down near the red zone for the Reavers. Yeah, I tell you what, they do a lot of trickery. Uh, and this, they never showed this this formation all year. Uh, they Same were always, for you. Yeah, exactly, that's where we're seeing that a lot. And how about that one to the end zone? Nearly an interception for the Reavers. They turn the ball back over. Taj Williams, he has been flat out shut down this year by, they just locked up on him, giving him all sorts of contact, and he just can't be, can't find himself free. Yeah, I mean, that's that's tough. I mean, you, you, you know, teams are pressing on him, they're playing the guy over the top, you gotta win some of those. That was an 80 yard punt, by the way, by Bobby Patterson, ties a school record as he gets it, uh, pins him deep, and then another interception, this one by Ben Garlock, second consecutive week that he has had an INT. What a huge, huge turn of events. I mean, Bobby punts at 80 yards, flips field position, yeah. we get an interception, and then we score a play later to, to you know, get us into the halftime. The Malcolm Moore touchdown makes it 14 to nothing. Reavers in front at the half. We'll talk about the adjustments, and we'll take a look at the second half highlights when we come back. More Stro Show right after this on CBTV 17. Schedule your campus visit today. Iowa Western, the world is waiting. From the studios of CBTV 17 in Council Bluffs, Jay Crying along with Iowa Western head football coach Scott Strohmeyer. Up at the half, Garden City's offensive woes, well, they, they were better than yours. The woes were, that is. <laughs> what was the thinking going into halftime? Would it be status quo? Did you, do you continue to run the way you were? Or do you make adjustments, anything scary that you see from Garden City's offense? No, I mean, I know that we made a few defensively, but we were playing pretty well, you know, and, and uh, they didn't really threaten us at all. Um, and the defense played extremely well, I thought, in the first half, created some turnovers. Offense almost reminded me of last year's Independence game, where Indy <laughs> never threatened the entire game. Mm -hmm. They used a variety of different quarterbacks. They at least had a starting quarterback, Garden City did, but 
couldn't ever get anything going. Even after a big play, it was like they just were stifled out almost immediately. Play of your defensive line and your linebackers obviously doing a great job, but I thought your defensive secondary might have had their best game of the year. They did. You know, and I'm telling you, we're, we're seeing some of the same. You can't run the football. It, it's tough, and, and you know, you'll get a play here or there, but at some point the field shrinks and you got to be able to run the football, and, and our, our defensive line did a heck of a job there. And, and then obviously in the secondary of, of making some big plays. All right, second half highlights. Reavers up 14 to nothing on the Bronx Busters of Garden City. Out of the locker room come Zia Western, and you get the ball to start the second half. But a three and out, you force a three and out from Garden City. Finally, we see a little knuckleball. And I tell you what, Turner Gaines, <laughs> reminiscent of Wes Smith, just uh, very dangerous where he's picking the football up. No fear from, from Turner Gaines. He is. I'll tell you what, he saved a whole bunch of yards. You know, when, when you can catch the punts like that, he saved a huge field position. Anthony Johnson threw a pass earlier, catches one there, and moves the chains again for the Reavers. And then Bobby Patterson on as you stall out, will attempt the field goal. And this one is up, and it is good. Makes it 17 to nothing. Feeling, uh, feeling like you're building that lead, feeling pretty good about this point, aren't you? Well, yeah, you know, especially when there's when it's a three-score game now. They haven't really threatened us. They'll get a play like that, a big play, and, and now we've got to come over with a stop, but not three possessions. The transfer out of Colorado, Jeff Thomas had a big day receiving, but again, just couldn't get free when it counted. He makes catches like that in space. And then next up, it'll be Venus Triplett out of the backfield as the Reavers, again, stacking the defensive line. The linebackers, I thought, played very well but it was the secondary that came through when they needed. Here's that run by Triplett. He rips it off, and guess what? Right there, I've got a bunch of guys in on the tackle. You see Shaq Jones down, strong safety coming up. Mark Hall from the defensive line there as well. Yeah, you know, they're, they're trying to answer, and that was, that was my thing. You know, you're up three scores. You can't give them a big one, and we, we you know, they come back. That's a heck of a throw and a yeah. catch, you know. And Keeson. that was on a different drive as, as right, Eddie Morris, right. the backup tailback, dives in and made a, a catch in traffic. Fourth down. Fourth down play too, and, and uh, you know Keith's in good position. Uh, it takes a perfect throw and a perfect catch, and that's what they got. So now 17 to seven, and it's getting closer to the fourth quarter where it's been kind of hard to hang on to a lead. Second and the third quarter, I looked at the scores the other day. You're dominating opponents as far as scoring goes. The first quarter still being outscored by a couple points in that fourth quarter. It doesn't look good, <laughs> and I, I know that the guys are trying to get that out of their head. But now you're up two scores, 17 to seven. And what do, you, what do you tell the team at that point, the offense, when they come back well, out? Well, I think my thing was, was our goal is to just get a first down. You know I mean? Get one first down, yep. then, then let's work on the next one. But, you know, we don't need to score the first play. We need to put some drives together. But I'll tell you what, if your goal is to get a first down, you're going to be all right. Tyus Mason runs some clock, and then Garden City has the football again. A late penalty marker comes in there, gives them a few more yards, and then Campbell trying to escape, and you just collapsing on him. Dominic Wilson, who came in and had some huge plays late in the game. We might see uh, one of them coming up. Another pooch punt. This one not quite as successful as the first time around. As the Reavers, you hear the call, get out of the way, and it rolls backwards. And I think it was like a four-yard punt that time by J. Rue Campbell. Yeah, and I was surprised that they did, you know, just because. But again, they're trying to pin us. We're not doing much offensively and uh, trying to make us go the length of the field. D.A. Williams knocks that pass away, intended for one of their wide receivers on the sideline. And the Reavers, again, will take over on downs as they just can't get anything going. No, like, again, credit our defense. They're playing extremely well. And we got to now offensively be able to, to keep them off the field and, like I said, sustain some drives. Well, you keep on the ground. And John Nazambo, another one. For as many long runs as he had, you would have thought he had a better day rushing but only 102 yards on the ground for the Reavers in the whole game. And I, I'm not sure if that's the, the least that you've ever rushed for in a game, but it certainly seemed like it was more positive than it, than it looked like on the final stat yeah, sheet. I, I would agree. You know, I've, we've been held to under 100 before, but uh, not very often. Here's another <coughs> uh, catch by Turner Gaines saving you some yards, and that puts the Reavers near the red zone to start things off. Again, saved a whole bunch of yards. He's come out with a little, uh, little different formation and, and uh, trying to get a hat on a hat and get some push. So again, continuing to push forward, push forward, run that clock. There was a lot of running in late in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Took a few shots at the, at the uh, he took a few shots with the short passes, but Brock didn't really go deep at all in the, in the second half. No, and, and you know, we probably should have, you know, and, and, but again, we got to feel that we, we're not winning those right now. And, right. and uh, they're more jump balls and we got to, that's, that's our job as coaches and, 
and we'll get some, put them in a little bit better situation. Well, you set up for a first goal here uh, after the run inside the 10, and you see the officials thinking it over. You guys are talking in the huddle here, up 17 to seven. What do you tell the guys? Got to punch it in, can put it away, and obviously we didn't. We had to settle for a field goal, which I still, you know, I, I debated about going for it. I mean. I didn't think they had a good field goal kicker, you know, anyways, yeah. but, uh, you know, get it 20, they still got three three touchdowns they got to get to do that. Well, Bobby Patterson puts that one through, and you're up 20 to seven, and the Reavers, again, continuing to just bring it on J. Rue Campbell. He was running for his life all day, the passes that he did get away. He looked like he gave, put a little bit too much oomph on it just because he was on the run. Yeah, and he, I would say that that's probably his, he's not Dom Wilson. Yeah, there's the nice. big hit on Dom that nearly jarred the football loose, but off the edge, man, he blew J. Rowe Campbell up on that play. He did, it was good. We came, that's one of the adjustments coach made, you know, putting in the three, four and blitzing Dom a little bit and, yep. and getting him, and they never, they couldn't pick it up. But I think his weakness, he's an athlete, the, the quarterback, he's not extremely accurate. Here's here's one where it's a great effort by Stacy. You know, that's a fourth down, I think, uh, as well. Yep. Came, up, came up short on that one and uh, it looked like he might have got a little piece of the hair on that one as he, as he ran through. So the Reavers win it 20 to seven. Uh, it, it wasn't pretty, but you got it done. Couple touchdowns in the first half and then Bobby Patterson tacks them on in the second half. 20 to seven, you get the win, fourth straight overall, back into the rankings this week at number 19. Feeling pretty good about the way the season's going now after those first two stumbles? Well, for sure, you know, and I mean, shoot, Coffeeville's number one in the country and we had him 21 points in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. and ended up losing in overtime, so. Um, you know, we're growing, it, like I said, everybody's a little bit better. You know, we're not in a position that we're going to walk in and just roll any, everybody every single week. And that doesn't mean that we're not that good. It's, I think, every, it's a combination of everybody's uh, a little bit better and, and we're banged up. You think this season is any different if you get that preseason schedule or the scrimmage in? Yeah, well, I think we'd have found out some things early, early on um, that it took us a week to figure out. Sometimes yeah. you don't know it unknown until you go through it. Right. So that'd be one. Um, for sure, you know, that I think, uh, you know, would have it changed. I don't know. I'll tell you this much. If you win one of those games, you know, if you win the first one, you're sitting, you're right there. Yep. Yeah, with only only one loss right now, the Reavers four and two, though. And well, a lot of lot of football to go. We've still got five regular season games left, and it includes this week's matchup against Independence. We'll talk about that in a couple segments. When we come back, though, Bobby Patterson has stepped into a big role this season for the Reavers. He gets the hot seat next. This is the Coach Stro Show on CBTV 17. Check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Coach Cho Show continues here on CBTV 17. I'm Cole McVey. Alongside me is Bobby Patterson, the kicker. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So a good win yesterday against Garden City. You had two really good kicks on field goal attempts. Can you tell me about what the mindset of a kicker is coming into a game? Uh, the mindset for me is basically I just try not to think about it. I mean, I try to zone everybody and everything out. Like when I go out to kick, I just think, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna make this kick. So I mean, you really gotta, um, <clears throat> you really gotta believe in yourself. And I mean, everybody on the team believes in me to get us those points. So I just okay. go out there and try my best. Uh, they haven't called your number a lot on field goal situations, but you got called two times last game. Uh, do you have some type of window you know when you're gonna come into the game? I know it's especially fourth downs. But yeah. do they give you kind of like a warning to warm up? Or? Uh, usually, like, if we're inside the 50-yard the line, I usually go over and start warming up. And then usually if we're usually inside the 30, 
they usually say field goal alert, usually on third down, so I'm usually pretty prepared. You also also had a very large, a long punt. You had an 80-yard punt. Can you tell us about if it was mostly luck, or did you just get a good boot on it? Or uh, I think it was a little bit of both. I mean, uh, from what I remember, it was a little bit of a high snap. Uh, I got it off, and it, it felt pretty felt pretty clean. And then I saw the returner turn his back and uh, start running backwards. I'm like, wow, this actually is going to go pretty far. And then it took a bounce and kept going, and then I'm like, oh, my God. And then when they downed it and I heard the announcer say an 80-yard punt, I was, I was in disbelief. So, I mean, I, I'm still, still in shock that it even happened. Yeah. And you had an 80-yard punt, but the other, your opposing punter, had a 4-yard punt or a 6-yard punt. Yeah. <laughs> so when it comes to punting and kicking, uh, f as far as going against somebody, are you just going against the other punter trying to see who can get the longest or – is it just kind of back and forth? Banter? It's kind of like back and forth, but I usually like to try. I like to uh, put myself out there and show that I'm the better kicker. So. Do you believe you got that yesterday? Yes, I do. I, th I most of the time. So. All right. Uh, coming into homecoming uh, week, what do you think about this game coming up against Independence? Can you give any thoughts on how harder practice has been, or do you guys really want to come out and win this homecoming game? Or. Oh yeah, I mean, it's always fun getting to play in front of our home fans. I mean. Uh, the first half of the season, a majority of our games were out in Kansas and the pretty long road trips, and, but it's good to be back home and there's always a good energy, good atmosphere when we're playing at home. So I'm really looking forward to this Saturday and should get the W. And how does it feel to be back home? You were on the game before Dodge City and you played three or four games on the road. How does it feel going on the road and coming back home? Oh, it feels great. I mean. It's always fun to play at home. I mean, the fans, the students, it's always fun to just be at home, and it's always a lot of fun. So. All right. Uh, thoughts on the rest of the season? You guys are now 4-2 and two after that 0-2 start. Uh, you guys aren't in the rankings. Do you guys believe you should be in the rankings? Or? Uh, yeah, actually, the polls came out today, and we're in the top 20. We're ranked 15th. Uh, I mean, a lot of people thought Iowa Western it wasn't going to be Iowa Western's year this year when we started out 0-2. I mean, if you look at it, we lost to the number one team in the country in overtime, and uh, we lost our second game of the season to Butler, which is ranked three. But, I mean, we've won four straight, and the momentum's on our side, so we're just going to keep rolling. We look forward to watching you for the rest of the season. Thanks for coming on the show, Bobby. Thanks for having me. All right, coming up next, Jake talks to the coach about the rest of the Coach Tro show. And he talks about the upcoming season for the Reavers. We'll be right back. Okay, it's decision time. I want to take classes I need, spend less time working to pay for them. I want flexibility to transfer my credits. I want to get started now. Find your path at iwcc.edu and get hands-on, real-world experience. Start now at Iowa Western. We're back to wrap up this week's Iowa Western Football Coaches Show. Homecoming week is busy on campus and off for the football team. They get set for the Battle of the Pirates. Jake Ryan and head coach Scott Strohmeyer, domination over Indy last season. A win on the road. This time you get them at home, and it's not the same Indy team. They've got a victory under their belt and a, a much better squad overall. They are. Like I said, I, I really like their tailback. We, we've been seeing, I think, the opponents that we play, we, we get their games almost – consistently up in the schedule. So we've seen a lot of their offense <clears throat> against some of the opponents' defenses. And uh, the tailback's good, the quarterback's athletic. Um, they're better up front on the offensive line. Uh, you know, so um, it's definitely going to be a tough one. I mean, like I said, they had two 100-yard rushers against Garden City, two individuals, and we rushed for 100 as a team. So, um, you know, they got some mobility. You've seen most of the Jayhawk already. Hutch obviously is down a little bit this year. You get Fort Scott still remaining on the schedule. 
and with Indy on Saturday, do you think the Jayhawk is up this season? I think so. I think top to bottom. Um, you know, you still, I don't think any one of them is just a powerhouse. You know, Fort Scott's got some really good defense players. Hutch still is pretty talented, um, you know, and then the ones that we've played. So uh, I think overall in general, the, the league is kind of evened out. Well, you've got one more at home with homecoming this weekend and then two more on the road and then you close out with two. We've got some great events coming up. Obviously, the 31st is Halloween and we'll have our first responders. We'll invite all the local police and fire to come out and, and have the kids in costumes. It can be kind of a combination Halloween safety day and then the chili cook-off and the Kinney Cup on the final, sa uh, final Saturday of the regular season for the Reavers. But this week it's homecoming. Now, before the football team came around, we didn't have a homecoming. We had Ginny Mokimo, which was homecoming backwards, and we had it for a basketball game, and it was great. But this is really kind of added to the atmosphere here at Iowa Western. The parade on Thursday night we're looking forward to. Uh, talk a little bit about what, uh, what it means to you. I know it's a busy week for the team getting ready for the game, but it, it, it kind of adds a more collegiate feel, I, I think, to Iowa Western. Well, for sure, and I mean, I told, that's what I told the team. I mean, it, homecoming was designed uh, because of the football team, so uh, without it, there's no homecoming. Um, so it's something to look forward to. You know, I think it's always nice you get your alumni and, and community support to, to come back uh, to the game. We've got Hall of Fame uh, guys, people in, inducted into the Hall of Fame. You know, so and that's that's really what homecoming is about. It's bringing all the alumni and they get to celebrate and go watch a football game and and hopefully. Uh, you know, get as many people back as you can. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the parade as well with not only football, but all the other school or all the other squads will be represented as well. That does wrap up this week's edition of the Coach Stro Show. The Reavers at home on Saturday. Lots to do before then. The 2.30 kickoff at Titan Stadium will be the second annual uh, homecoming parade. That will be Thursday night at 7 on the 100 block, followed by the pep rally in back of Barley's and Glory Days. Make sure you join us early on on game day for the Hall of Fame brunch which will be here on campus at the Student Center and then again at Lewis Central's Titan Stadium for the free tailgate beginning at 1230. It includes food and beverages and free entertainment, this time from IWCC student group Gallivant. It all comes to you from Tailgate Village, which is sponsored by Barley's and Glory Days, both those, those places, of course, on the 100 block. We will honor Matt Johnson, the owner of Barley's. He is the 2015 Outstanding Iowa Western alum that will be honored this season. We'll meet the homecoming court, and we'll do all of that at halftime. And, of course, we've got some football as the Reavers host Independence at 2.30. Battle of the Pirates. Pre-game begins on 89.7 The River at 1.30 with Jared Ingram and Russ Nelson. I'd like to thank again to uh, head coach Scott Strohmeyer, also freshman kicker Bobby Patterson from St. Ansgar, Iowa, and of course, uh, you for tuning in today. And as always, a big thank you to the IWTV students participating in today's program. They have made sure that it gets put together and gets on the air. This has been the Iowa Western Football Coaches Show, the Coach Stroh Show. We'll take a week off for fall break and be back with a brand new edition the week of the 19th, right after the Reavers take on DuPage on the road in the Windy City. Thanks for tuning in again. We hope to see you Saturday at the stadium. Remember, until then, wear blue, be loud, and go Reavers.